come to the dark side. We have cookies. <laughs> Now, are you ready for this? Today, we'll be making a gingerbread Death Star and Starkiller base filled with cake bites of Kylo Ren and Darth Vader. Woo! Preheat your oven 190 degrees C. Cream together 100 grams of butter or margarine and 100 grams of sugar until very pale and fluffy. Next, beat an egg and pour half of this into the bowl. Whisk again to combine. Follow that up with about half a cup of golden syrup. I just used the cup as an estimate and eyeballed it because we all know how hard it is to get syrup out of a container. And a tablespoon of white vinegar. Next, we need to sieve in the dry ingredients. That's 300 grams of flour, half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of ginger, one teaspoon of mixed spice, and a pinch of salt. Then transfer the mix into a freezer bag and place in the fridge or freezer until firm enough to roll without getting stuck to your rolling pin. While your gingerbread dough is chilling, crumble about two cupcakes worth of cake, then mix in some buttercream until you can make the mix into a ball. First we'll make Darth Vader. Starting with a ball of cake mix, place on the counter and flatten out the bottom, pressing in as you do so to create the curve of the helmet. You'll also want to flatten his face a little bit too. Kylo Ren is much simpler. Starting off with your ball of cake mix, lengthen it slightly into more of an oval shape, then pinch in the bottom for his chin. Once ready, place in the freezer to chill and harden. Since I didn't have a mould, I actually wrapped tin foil around a tennis ball, making sure to pack it down to create a solid layer. I then cut this ball in half to create two identical hemispheres of foil. By wrapping them in another layer of foil, I made sure there was no loose edges. By now, your cookie dough should be chilled enough to roll out and cut. Use a round cutter that's larger than your spheres. Then smooth the dough out and mould it to the shape. You want to make sure it's firmly attached so that it doesn't move during baking. To do this, just pinch the bottom of the cookie and push it into the bottom edge of the foil. Then, using another cutter that's exactly the same size as the cookie covered mould, cut another circle and from this a smaller circle inside. Then remove some of the front of this ring to create that kind of trench where the super weapon is located. I did all of this cutting already on the baking sheet. This means it doesn't get all smushed up when you try to move it around. Then bake your cookies for around 10 minutes or until lightly golden brown. When they're fresh out of the oven, use something round to make the indent that will be the super laser. Then allow it to cool completely. If your cookies are still a little soft when you remove them from the mold, just pop them back in the oven upside down for a few more minutes. Now we can melt some dark chocolate and dip our cake bites. Using the remaining chocolate, pipe on the lines for decoration. For any lighter details, use some white chocolate. Place in the fridge to harden and when ready, place inside the two halves of the cookie and seal together with some more white chocolate. Make sure to fill any gaps, then smooth it out with your finger. For the Starkiller base cookie, add the piece you made for the trench then a blob of white chocolate and a red sprinkle for their super weapon. To get the silver effect, I actually used some luster dust, although I would recommend some silver food spray paint. And that's them finished. Now if I can just find that thermal oscillator, yes! Not so powerful now, are we Kylo Ren? Who knew destroying Starkiller Base would be so easy? And tasty. Mmm. Thanks for watching. To check out my last video, click right here. And to see my next video, click over here. And don't forget to leave any suggestions for future videos in the comments. Bye.